Today's gospel says light came into the world, but people prefer darkness to light. Who really prefers darkness? Maybe we wouldn't say we prefer darkness, but we might say we prefer privacy, or we prefer secrecy, or we prefer certain things to go unnoticed, or we prefer our reasonable excuses. But we wouldn't say we prefer darkness. No, 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 no. So if we're watching something on television which is vulgar, impure, or violent, we would prefer a little privacy. If we're gossiping, backbiting, colorizing the truth when the other party isn't present, we prefer the promise of secrecy. Let's just keep this between the two of us. If we overextend our lunch break with everyone else, if we cheat on our taxes, or if we text while driving, we prefer that to go unnoticed. If we have one too many drinks, it's only because it's St. Patrick's Day. If we miss mass, it's only because we really needed to catch up on our sleep. Or if we go meets without calling our parents, it's only because they really understand how busy we are. So we prefer to say that we have a good excuse. Concepts like privacy, secrecy, blending in with the crowd, and reasonable excuses can offer us the cover of darkness. When the full light of truth really isn't welcomed, in such cases the truth is that we are preferring darkness. This darkness, this desire for darkness can come to the point when we wish we didn't even know better. Uh, you've heard the phrase, ignorance is bliss. This proverb is misused regularly. Is it really bliss to live in darkness? So yesterday, by March standards, sunny day was kind of a nice day for those of us who really like grilling. Oh, wait, I can't grill brats. It's Friday and Lent. Oh, I wish I had forgotten that. Ignorance would have been bliss. <laughs> Sometimes we wish we weren't aware of certain things, that certain things were sins. Perhaps when dealing with end-of-life issues, we wish the suffering were over, and in all honesty, the concept of mercy killing actually sounds compassionate. We wish we hadn't heard the reasons why euthanasia is wrong. For me, I embraced my celibacy, and I always knew that I was called to the priesthood, but there was a month-long period when I was in high school that I wish I hadn't known my calling, because she had a name. And I wish like I hadn't been Catholic or the ultimate compromise, like if I could have been a Episcopalian and gotten a priest and had married all at the same time. <laughs> Ultimately, it was a desire for ignorance of my true calling and a desire to run away from the light. The Gospel says, For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light. Have you ever seen, uh, if you're while driving, red and blue lights in your rear view mirror? Oh no, I wish I hadn't seen the light. We highly prefer that our bad deeds and poor lifestyle decisions had remained in darkness. We get this feeling especially when we're sent to the principal's office, when we're notified by the IRS that we're being audited or when we're waiting the results of our physical exam. <clears throat> In light of these situations, there is no more hiding the truth. There is no need to prefer darkness and avoid the light. Jesus Christ is the light, and he came to save, not to condemn. And so let us come to him, and especially in the sacraments of healing, when we've chosen moral darkness,
we can experience freedom and sacrament of reconciliation. When we experience the weight of physical and emotional darkness, we can receive peace and strength in the sacrament of anointing of the sick, which we will have after the homily. And when we experience the darkness of spiritual lethargy and hunger, we can be nourished by Jesus in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. To be honest about the hidden forms of darkness in all situations, let us refuse to live in darkness. Let us turn to Christ our light, who comes to save us from all forms of darkness.